Okay, so in the last demo, I was able to cut out a little cookie cutter of my creature out of cloud texture. I used this cloud texture, cut out the, the very clean edged selection around the pixels of my creature layer. The problem is when I look at this cloud, I see that the edges are not uniformly sharp. In fact, none of them, none of these edges, what we call um, the edge quality is as sharp as what I have. So what options do I have? Well, there is a tool that we have not used before. It's called the blur tool. And it's above the dodge and burn. It looks like a little teardrop. The blur tool will basically blur where you press. So let me just demonstrate it to you. Unlike dodge and burn, I like to use this at 50% strength or higher <laughs> because it's a really subtle tool. You'll always use a soft edge brush for it. And then you go to the layer you want to affect. So in this case, my cloud silhouette layer. And then you just start clicking it. And you see how it will take the hard edge of that pixel away. It just blurs it. Like if you print an inkjet print and then you just use drops of water on it, it will make the, the inks run and soften. The problem is it will also decrease contrast. So here we have this nice little shadow from that cloud. As I blur it, it will also soften that contrast, but it won't get rid of it or change its direction. Okay, another way we can play with edge control with a new tool is what's called the smudge tool. And that's underneath the blur tool. The smudge tool is very similar. And I use it in very similar ways. Soft edge brush, pretty large, strength. This is a little bit stronger. So I'm going to use this more like dodge and burn, less than 30. Now, when I use this, it's going to blur it, but it's also going to move it. So as I move, it will push the cloud in different directions. Ooh, like the wind does. And I can push it back and forth. Now, if you do it too much, you'll get a lot of what's called digital noise. And glitch artists love this. So what happened? I moved it back and forth a lot. And so the computer actually picked up on those subtle variations in color and exaggerated them because it was just overlapping them over and over again, like a motion blur. And so if I were to burn that, I'm zoomed in, so let me get a much smaller brush. If I were to burn that, you'll see all those different colors, right? which aren't really that believable is those horizontal stripes. So when you're using, but look, that's a huge difference. When you're using the, the um, smudge tool, you just push it a little bit. You just kind of push it in different directions a little bit. It's like blowing out candles. Now that might be really helpful for my creature, especially on these kind of wings. Like if I make this a little bit bigger, I'm just going to blow out the candle on this edge of the cloud. And I decide, oh, I want to blow it this way now. All right. Now, both of these, the blur and the smudge, they take a ton of processing. So you want to be easy on your computer. <laughs> so what does that mean? You don't want to have extra programs open. And you want to save frequently. <laughs> because they can take a lot of processing. Okay, now I can do that individually and soften just the edges of the cloud, and maybe that would be best, but it's gonna take me a long time, right? And I can use the smudge tool to kind of sh change the shape a little bit so that it looks more believable as a cloud. It's already helping. But there should be a way that I can just soften all of these pixels a little bit so that they're more like what a cloud really looks like. And so that method we've used a little bit before, it's what's called the Gaussian blur filter. 
And this is the only filter I recommend we use in compositing because it does something very, very straightforward and very believable. So Gaussian blur, you go to filter, blur, then Gaussian blur. It's simply makes a really big drop on your whole image and blurs all the pixels together a little bit, but you get to control how much. So notice these, these are not cloud believable shapes, right? But as I Gaussian blur them, they become more and more believable as a cloud. But that is believable as a cloud, but the problem is, does it actually look believable in the middle? Not really, because clouds also have some hard edges. And so Gaussian blur can get rid of all the hard edges. So how can I have my cake and eat it too? Well, I can make a duplicate of it, right? And then I can turn off the, the one I copied from, and then I can Gaussian blur very heavily. Blur, Gaussian blur, around 8.2. Let's do it even more, about there. So that all those little flyaways look more believable. And then on top of it, I can bring my sharp edged one. And now I'm going to use some old tried and true techniques. So I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity, large and 0% hardness, right? Not that large. And I'm going to erase away from some of these edges at the back. Again, I can use this cloud as kind of a reference. And what does that 100% eraser do? It gets rid of those hard edges, not on the inside, not on the inside, but on the outside edges. And for things like the tail, I just, yeah, I just want to get that all out there. All right, so what does that look like on my, on my sky? It's a little bit better. I can even then go to the interior a little bit, but maybe I use a lower opacity eraser now. And if I want to use my stylus and tablet, I can use pressure sensitivity for how big it is based on how hard I press. And I can just soften it where I want. So where Gaussian blur softens it. And this is just with my primary composited layer. But now I want to kind of identify what's not working, what's not as believable. This isn't as believable here. This isn't as believable a big chunk here. So let's bring in some other clouds. So if I take this one, we can always do stuff with compositing. So I'm going to select it, hit Command J. It keeps me from having to use it as a smart layer. Then I'm going to do 100% erasing, but first I'm going to get all the sky out of there with my magic wand. Have contiguous unchecked. Oops, got to be on the right layer. So it gets all the blue, right? Even the blue on like the little inside there. Then I'm going to soften that selection. It's like blurring the selection using select and mask. It's remembering my settings. I'm feathering it. I'm expanding the radius and I'm shifting the edge a little bit. I'm going to do it a little bit more and say, okay. And then when I cut it out, you'll see that it, it softens the edge as I cut it out, which helps. Now, like this is going to be a more believable wing. I can transform it a little bit, but I still need the light to hit from above, right? I can warp it. but I still need the light to hit from above. Also, notice how the blue doesn't match my blue, my sky, and the cloud doesn't match the kind of yellow of my cloud. So color balance and levels. Let's try color balance first because I think it's pretty close. I'm going to move it a little bit more towards yellow, a little bit more towards green, get rid of that pink in the midtones. So 
a touch more towards cyan. And the highlights, a little bit more towards yellow. There we go. A little bit more towards green. A little bit towards cyan. And in the shadows, maybe a little more towards cyan in the shadows. All right, let's see if that made a difference. Absolutely. Now the levels, notice this cloud is extremely bright up here. So I don't want to push the highlights anymore or I'll lose more pixels. Instead, I want to use levels, which is lights and darks, to maybe even limit the highlights a little bit. And then I can brighten them overall without losing pixel definition. And I can limit the shadows a little bit if I think I need to. But I kind of like that darker core or the underside of the wing. Okay, now what? Now we go to another technique that we've done before. We're going to do soft erasing. So I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity to get rid of these kind of internal hard edges. But I'm going to use it with a very soft edge and with a pressure sensitive stylus. And that way I can do what's called ghosting. This isn't ghosting on Facebook, on Twitter. This is ghosting by erasing just outside of the edge. So here is my stylus. If I push hard on the outside, you see how it will echo. That 100% eraser, soft edge, will echo and will kind of particulate and erase away even outside where I am painting or erasing. So this is a very kind of sophisticated, beautiful way that we can blend those. Remember, I want to use full opacity eraser, though. I don't want there to be any lingering of those hard edges. Because if there were, that would really um, call attention to itself. And I can do that same thing to my layer underneath. my blur layer, right? <coughs> so just ghosting the edge. And that will give me the appropriate level of lost and found edges, which are much more believable to what a cloud is, like that. Now in terms of the shape, I can, I'll usually just trust my reference. So instead of trying to make it match my creature's shape, I try to match my reference's shape a little bit. Is it okay that I don't have every feather? Absolutely. It just needs to suggest my creature. It doesn't have to be my creature. And then on the inside, I can do that same kind of thing where I think it's needed. Maybe a little bit there. There we go. Okay, let's see, what else? Let's bring in some other references. I've only used two so far. So I'm going to control my space. It's all about how you manage your, your desktop here. There we are. Look at my cloud reference, bring it off to the side here, make sure I can see it all. And let's see, what's going to help me with the bottom? Well, let me show you how you can take black and white reference, or very limited color, and you can control its color. So first of all, I'm going to just loosely Get an organic shape there, duplicate it. 
right? And now,